records Smell the cover, read all the verses Tell me about your favorite Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Vinyl and Vision. This is another special bonus episode with my special guests, Chris and Jennifer Daltrey. Uh, Chris and Jennifer are the founders of What Cheer Records and Antiques and the founders of the Rock and Roll Yard Sale, which will be happening this weekend, July 24th, from 1 to 6. Um, it's an absolutely free event. It's just an open-air marketplace full of a bunch of unique vendors, and I will be included in that. So I'm actually very honored to, to be, uh, be part of this event and uh, very, very much looking forward to it. Um, just to let you know, we will actually also be recording this podcast there on site. Um, I have a small mobile setup and I will be uh, asking people who are going to be flipping through the records, uh, looking through a bunch of uh, music to see if they find something that uh, maybe intrigues them to share a story. And I figured that'd be a kind of cool little thing to do uh, in, aside from just being there to uh, selling the records. So this discussion is going to be a very short one. It's uh, only about half an hour, and it's uh, basically uh, Chris and Jennifer discussing the uh, the beginnings of this event and where they started, uh, how they started this around 2004, and uh, what it has grown into. So um, just listen up. I hope you enjoy it. In addition to uh, Americans' um, information. He, uh, Chris also shares with me that uh, they, he will be playing with the Americans their very first show since, uh, you know, uh, post-pandemic at uh, the Newport Playhouse uh, coming up this Monday, which is, uh, I'm not sure of that date offhand, but I will provide you a link in the show notes. So go into the show notes and you can find the link to, to find tickets for that event. It's an all-star studded cast of uh, a bunch of folk singers, uh, Allison Ca Callery, Dan Blakesey, and a bunch of others that uh, I cannot remember offhand right now, but sounds like a super cool event to, to check out if you are interested in doing that. And uh, without further ado, here's the show. Hey, how are you? Nice to Good. see you, Jen Jennifer, Chris. Yes, hi. hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, you guys have quite a collection right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just part of it. There's another whole wall over here and a wall over here. Yeah, right. Yeah, I actually, um, I had never been there, and I'm sorry I can't be there today, but um, I ran into you, Chris, once at uh, Salvation Army in North Providence. Yeah. And I remember you telling me the story about your record room mm -hmm. in one of your apartments. Yeah, this well, this is um, this is a house that we rent in North Providence, but it you know there are records. Um, you know, I mean, we try to keep things tidy, but there are always records pretty much everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we also work out of our house um, with mail order, so right. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what cheer the uh, the store itself had had closed in uh, what was it two thousand seventeen? It seems. Um, yeah, yeah, that three, seems yeah, right. Four yeah. years, four years or so. Yeah, right. And so now you just moved everything to doing things online and and the occasional in person thing, like the like the yard sale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. cool. So now, Chris, I'm familiar with you and like you know the music that you've been part of and the the bands you've been part of in the history in Providence. Uh, Jennifer, I'm not familiar with you as much. What is your relationship to to the arts and music scene? Um, well, I grew up in Rhode Island, in Bristol, and I went to RISD and graduated in 91. And just, I moved away for a couple of years to San Francisco, but I moved back and met Chris. And that's just, we started collecting mm -hmm. things and then over time um, started selling them. And so it was just kind of a way in the beginning of um, making extra money so that we could take time so that Chris could work on music and I could work on art. I'm a visual artist. Okay. And um, so that's kind of our connection there. Yeah. yeah. And when did you two meet? Um, 1994. Um, yeah. Yeah. The uh, May of 1994, oh. I had moved back to Bristol and was trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I got a job at a ceramic studio in Bristol and lo and behold Chris Daltrey was working there and there's one example of of Jennifer and and my art uh, kind of colliding is uh this album of mine um oh the Americans yeah so this is uh you know my band but it the cover art 
was is by Jennifer. So uh, oh, excellent. Anyway, so um, that's sort of what she does and and what I do besides the business. Yeah, so that's that's your only collaboration aside from from doing the business so far. So far, <laughs> and life. I mean, you know, we live together, we work together, we right. work out of our house together. So um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and um, I wanted to ask about uh, what cheer because um, what cheer is kind of like a historic thing in the in the city, isn't it? And I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, it is. Um, like if it's the on the seal of Rhode Island of right. on the seal of Providence, Providence of Providence, Rhode Island, like on police officers' badges, there's a little image of um, that says "What's your knee top?" and mm-hmm. it has. It goes back to the founding of Rhode Island. The legend is, anyway, that okay. when Roger Williams landed here, he had met some friendly uh, Native Narragansett Indians, and um, the phrase "What your knee top?" was uttered, uh, which was a combination of the English expression "What cheer," which is "Hello," um, like a, "How you doing?" Um, okay. Yeah. And I've it. since learned that that is still used um, in England, but they pronounce it "Watcher." Yeah. Like what not sure. what cheer, but what cheer. What cheer, yeah. Ah. But yeah, it's it, in in um in the 1630s. You know, that's where the legend has it. Um, mm. So, um, and it's become a very Providence-centered thing w- with the city using what cheer as its kind of slogan. And mm-hmm. business, we're not the only business to use its name over the years. Um, but um, yeah. now, you know, there are several. And if you look back into old phone books, you'll see car dealerships, ice cream shops, and, and who knows what else that used the name. So, right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like I, I had a closet RISD that was in the What's Your Garage. And then mm-hmm. early when we were dating, um, Chris audited a class at RISD that was the history of providence in rhode island and so he became kind of more familiar with that terminology and um, right. the uh there's a kind of a compilation dictionary uh called the language of america that was published by roger williams and so there are words like knee top which is neighbor um and so that's oh. the combination of oh, what yes. cheer and knee top I long see. story short yeah. <laughs> no no that's fine i wanted to i wanted to understand the history because it's something that i've always been seeing and mm-hmm. I've always kind of been curious and just figured you, you probably, you two would probably be the best couple to ask about it. So, and I was right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was a history major at college and my interest uh, in history uh, grew uh, and, and kind of expanded into what we wound up doing with our business. So when mm-hmm. we were seeking a name, you know, we just wanted something that was very local uh, centric. Right. Yeah. And that, 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 yeah, I think that nails it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the business and all that, but uh, first, would you mind me asking you about how you are doing? How, how are you feeling these days? Me? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling okay. Um, I mean, it's a definitely a struggle, um, you know, sort of the, the reality is I have like permanent back problems that, um, mm you know, throughout the rest of my life will probably be a, like, there'll be attempts to, uh, to sturdy it and, and keep, keep me upright. <laughs> right. Um, and, um, but it's a, a degenerative uh, disease. So it's oh. becoming harder to carry records and yeah, it, it's, it's good that we kind of shifted from retail to working at home. So, you know, I don't have to be uh, as physical and in, in, in carrying things and, and whatnot, but um, mm-hmm. it's not the best situation, but I'm trying to make the best of it by, um, you know, with us pushing forward with, uh, with our event. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and also I'm trying to get back to playing music again, which is, it's been a long time since I've been able yeah. to do that. So, right. Uh, but yeah, thanks for asking. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I've had three surgeries now and right. one of them was unsuccessful. Um, the most recent one, um, we'll see. Uh, I won't know until the end of the year um, if, if it took or not. Um, so it's a mm-hmm. kind of a long waiting game. And um, right. 
I don't know. I, it's, it's to the point where um, it's become my life um, in, in dealing with it, but I'm doing my best to also include other things that are important to me. So it's, it right. doesn't define me. Uh, as yeah. Much. Right. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're, you know, doing okay for now. Like it's, uh, it's something that you're dealing with every day and, uh, and looking on the, the positive side, at least. You know, mm, yeah, as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I'm sure Jen's there to help and support you. And then that's great. Yeah. And I'm, it's good that you're, that she's there for you. Yeah. If I didn't have her, you know, as not only as a, you know, life partner, but, um, a business partner and, and but just somebody to help help me and take care of me through through this um i'd be i'd be flawed <laughs> right <Aww. So. laughs> yeah that's very sweet um yeah yeah you just have, you guys are a very admirable couple i really love what you guys have you just uh, it's very obvious how evident how how loving you guys are and how much in you know involved you are Aww. yeah <laughs> <So sweet. laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, that's what I can observe from, from the outside, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I think that's great. Oh, thanks. So, um, so getting back to the, the event in hand, uh, the rock and roll yard sale, this is an annual thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we, until the pandemic hit, we have been, we've been doing you know, on, on average two a year um, okay. and they're both annual uh, one is in Providence and the other is in Somerville up in the Boston area. So oh, yeah. we for years have done one in the spring in Providence and one in late summer or early fall in, in Somerville. Um, and it's been about, well, I don't know. It, it's been since, you know, pre pandemic. So. Um, yeah. We were supposed to have done one in May mm -hmm. and then, you know, May came back around and um the people we collaborated with in downtown Providence weren't ready yet to figure out how to go forward. Um, right. It was the sort of block party on Westminster street. And so we were just kind of hoping that some other opportunity would present itself. Mm -hmm. And amazingly it did. Yeah. And so the Trinity beer garden people mm -hmm. reached out to us and they want to have events there. And we went and scoped it out and realized how great it is. Mm -hmm. So we're really hoping that it is a good fit for us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we will be able to do the original event again. That'll kind of depend on the other people. But um, Somerville will be the same. That's going to be in September. We have mm -hmm. a date for that. And so that's in uh, Union Square in, in Somerville. So, oh, great. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden we have <laughs> some normal things happening. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's true. For as I long mean, as it lasts, you know. Well, I was going to ask. I mean, have you have either of you been out since you know getting vaccinated? Or, I mean, I, obviously, I'm uh, going out for you must be a little difficult. You probably don't want to go to a show and stand up for a few hours, right? Yeah, it, it can be hard. It, yeah. Even though that, like, I really miss uh, live music, and we've gone out to a few shows um, and just outdoor things. Um, yeah. And I'm playing my first show in probably a few years now, um, next Monday um, in Newport. Oh. Um, Ken Abrams, who's a, a local writer, um, he has put together a, a showcase of Rhode Island. I mean, he's sort of in a, in a folk genre, like Rhode Island like song, singer, singer songwriter. songwriters. Okay. And, um, and there's a show on Monday night at the Newport Playhouse, and it's Americans, uh, my band, and Allison Callery, and oh. um, uh, Dan Blakesley, and um, hmm. I, I, it's it's about ten ten different artists. Ten long? Uh, the Whale Guitar. Um, mm. Oh, okay. So, um, so for me, that's exciting. Um, but it's uh, we only took the show because it's an outdoor uh, thing. Um, I mean, and a I, short set. Yeah, everybody's playing a short set, not. Yeah. A right. regular like festival kind of thing yeah yeah but well, that's great um, but like yeah i i miss like being jammed into um a club or or a you know we're, we're both fans of um a few artists that we'd like to see live like nick cave and um you know um the ocs and stuff like that like it you get into a crowd and you you get this in incredible energy and the volume and whatnot, but right. we're not quite ready for that. But, um, yeah. um, and that's also why, you know, we had some options to do our event, um, indoors, but we, 
waited until something outdoors came just just to be on the safe side for us and our vendors sake and and the right. attendees yeah um, that's a great idea and it's also just nice to be able to take advantage of the outdoor you know scene and that's yeah. a great spot the trinity beer garden that's uh, in kennedy plaza right it's mm-hmm. yeah uh, it's right across from uh, what the billmore hotel and it's in between it and the um and the skating rink downtown right um, okay um, yeah great spot yeah so and, um we were talking about how it's a semi-annual event or it's like a two a biannual event uh once in providence once in somerville um and it started when did it start uh 2004 it was our first one um we um we had been uh, i don't know if you want to tell the story but um Oh, well, we started doing events that weren't our own event, but uh, we started off participating in something called the WFMU Record Show, which was in, uh, it was a fundraiser for the radio station WFMU, and a three day long record show in this giant, it was called the Metropolitan Pavilion in Manhattan, Um, and it had moved to different locations, but that's where we participated in it. And it was so much fun. Like we had gone to record shows before and they're usually just like in veterans halls and it's just yeah, guys out there, you know, just like hovering over their boxes of records. <laughs> and this was like a fun vibe and DJs and there was um, like punk bands from Japan. I mean, it, the, the state, I don't know if you're familiar with WFNU, but it's completely freeform radio right. and it's, it was at a, a, a school called um, East, East Orange University, I think, in, okay. um, in northern New Jersey. But the school um, went away. Um, I, you know, they just stopped being a school. But the station was so popular and, um, and its DJs w- w- didn't, wouldn't want it to go away. So they kept the station alive. Um, and hmm. this record fair is one way they do it. So this incredible community of dealers come from all. And, and buyers come from all over the world. Um, yeah. Was- so uh, it, that was um, twice a year and we loved it. It, the, it was a, became an important part of our income, um, you know, besides the store. Um, and then for some reason they stopped doing it twice a year and made it just once a year. So on our car ride home, we were like, oh man, this is, you know, this is such a bummer. Like, what are we going to do? And then Mm. we started brainstorming. And by the time we got home, we were like, we're going to, we're going to do this in Providence. Um, And we contacted um, a friend of ours um, who was um, named Jeffrey Alexander, who um, was doing a lot of the programming at AS220 back then. Right. And um, this is before AS220, you know, sort of, revamp the space and all but um we asked if we could do one there and we you know set up on all the rickety cafe tables yeah it was very (laughs) diy it's very improvised um, it began as a very you know very small thing and grew into something it grew out of that um and that's part of why we do them outdoors now is because you know we want to have more vendors than most venues can hold around here right right and so how, in, in relation to when you guys first started, like that first year to now, how many vendors have you grown to, to accommodate? Um, I, I think it's on average, like close to 50. Yeah. Normally um, uh, when we started, yeah. it was maybe 12 <laughs> <laughs> at that first ASU 21. And we really wanted it to be just records at first. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we realized, you know, not all of, there aren't that many record dealers locally not right. that many were willing to come from Connecticut or Boston or whatever. And we were having a hard time getting vendors. And meanwhile, people who were crafters and vintage people were really, really keen to take part in it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So we decided to little by little, you know, let other elements in. Hmm. And uh, But we wanted to remain the rock and roll yard sale. So we've always tried to keep that element there because now there are like a million craft and vintage fairs and you know right. we make that um what makes us unique but uh but yeah at the time there really weren't 
any anything like that no, happening in Providence, so. and especially yeah. with like the trying to make it a fun vibe and with as220 you know they would have they would open the bar that day so people could get a drink and wander around and <laughs> um so when there's more of an incentive to you know stay and just have fun not just be shopping yeah um, right that's right. you know uh that's what we were interested in trying to create so that's great yeah, well, it was a great idea. I think you guys are doing it very successfully and very well. I mean, I'm looking Thanks. forward to it myself. I mean, uh, this would be my first year participating, and I just think it's a great opportunity for me. I mean, I'm just a little dude. I'm just a little kind of <laughs> independent <laughs> operation here. So, I mean, it's it's just a great experience, I think, for me. Um, That's what it's all about. I mean, you know, some of our vendors are are very professional, and they, they do um, sh shows like this, um, all weekends you know right. somewhere um but there's there are also people that you know like yourself or even people that are they just have a collection they want to liquidate you know so it it yeah. can be a one-time thing or people that are just starting i mean when we start when we started doing it we were just starting in a way um you know right. we've come a long way with learning about records and and stuff since but um yeah. yeah so it's not supposed to be people that are you know pros at, at it you know and mm -hmm. you know what you bring to it is just as um as important and exciting to us as 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 anyone so um yeah that's so. great so um well, i gotta i gotta ask Olin because i keep on looking at those records of yours over there um yes. How many do you keep for yourself? Like, what do you, how do you delegate what you want to keep and what you are willing to part with? Hmm. Uh, I don't know how many we have, but um, it's just mainly what we like. I mean, mm -hmm. we started, I guess the collection started with just our own little bits of, of, you know, our own records that we liked. But then Chris's grandfather, who was a jazz musician, passed away and left him his record collection. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot mm -hmm. of jazz, a lot of like vocalists, vocalists yeah. big band stuff. And so we went down to the Philadelphia area for the funeral and wound up with a whole oh, carload. carload of records. <laughs> so that was, that was, was yeah, kind of the start. Um, but because both of us um, after college, she had moved to San Francisco. I had moved to New York city um, to pursue music and art. Um, but at that point, you know, we, neither of us had hung on to a lot of stuff that we'd had in high school and college. Um, so, you know, when we met, we just started thrifting and flea marketing and picking up records. Um, and then when we started dealing in antiques and vintage, you know, records are always there too. Um, right. but my grandfather's collection was like this sudden, like, you know, in, it, injection of vinyl uh, there were i think two thousand records from him oh, wow. and you know some of them were junk that you know um we we didn't keep but a lot of them you know it became kind of an education in in those genres more in the in the 50s and 60s kind of pop vocal and jazz um mm. stuff that we you know we just didn't hear as much of growing up so yeah um, and when, when I used to visit him, when, when our family would go visit my grandfather, he had this den and, you know, his chairs were set up kind of like this, but in front of a wall of, of records and books. And that, I found that fascinating as a kid. Mm. Um, so he had told his, uh, his wife that when, when he died, he wanted us to have the records. <laughs> wow. Um, so That's I think, right. you know, we, we appreciate them. Yeah, that's one. That's wonderful. Uh, I, I like that idea of that setup thing. It's kind of like a like little little culture cult corner, you know. Yeah, yeah. In your house, like that's where you kind of just like sit to him and absorb all all the all the <laughs> education that you didn't get in school. You know, mm, totally. Um, this is, I mean, totally. This is our education. And when you asked before, like, how do we decide like what to keep or not? It's you know, as dealers, and it's mostly stuff that I wind up dealing with but we get collections or we go through stuff in storage and i just put aside ones that i, I haven't heard or i don't know anything about that look interesting so mm. um or there might be multiple copies of like we'll get another copy 
and right. we'll pull out ours and we'll compare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes one is worth more money. And as long as we have like a good playable one, we're not like in terms of collectors needing to have the rarest thing right. um, because we're also, you know, that's, that's I guess, we yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, we make, how we make a living. But then there are things that we're like, Oh, I can't possibly part with this one. Yeah. So sometimes um, I'll be like on the computer and, and the record will be playing and she'll come in and is like, what's this? So mm -hmm. that that's part of how we wind up with more and more records. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any any interested party in my in my household yet. That's you know trying. That's vying for anything that I get. So I I luckily can just kind of get rid of it, whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, back to the event. Um, so it's going to be happening on Saturday. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like the forecast is pretty clear, so we should not have to worry about the rain date. Oh, oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. If there's a rain date. It's the next day. But um, yeah. in, in our whole existence, um, we've only had um one rain date and um and then there was the pandemic but we've mm. been very lucky with um being able to pull the events off when we we'd like so yeah we need you know if it's a nice day it's going to be an incredible um collection of people and and a and, and a good time yeah. yeah it seems like people are really really anxious to get out and do things now oh, yeah <laughs> anything yeah. so we're yeah we're it seems like the timing is perfect for us because the this the opportunity popped up with a lot less time than we usually have to right. organize and and promote an event we're usually like almost a year out to when we have a date for something and right. putting the pieces in place but um you know we're just kind of rolling with it and <laughs> we'll see how it goes i was flyering today Oh yeah, uh, old school and those I beautiful Prince flyers. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and that's those great. would be uh, um, Swamp Yankee or Pete McPhee who designed that. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, will have silk screened um, poster versions of those for sale. Um, awesome at, at the event as well. So that's great. I'm going to try to pick one up myself. Good. Hopefully, he won't <laughs> run out. Uh, he's been making posters for our event since the very beginning. Um, our first poster in 2004 was um, he, he used Buddy Cianci's face um, and oh. sort of did the, you know, uh, something to do with like the rock and roll yard sale, but Buddy has a posse or something. And, <laughs> uh, but he's done a, you know, music icon uh, for the rock and roll yard sale ever since. And, right. Um, yeah, I've definitely, I remember seeing some of them over the years. I mean, there's there was certainly, there was Lou Reed, there was mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Elvis Costello, and then so many more just, yeah, just iconic images. And they, they were always great. So this year is particularly interesting because it's Prince. Yeah. 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 yeah it's um, a, it's, and it looks great. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you about your vendors. You, you stated that you have so many coming in. Are there any that are like particularly of interest to you and that are might be coming in from out of the state? Um, we usually get, uh, I mean, for, for this particular event, I, I believe we're, we'll have about 35 vendors, which is, you know, us being conservative because of COVID and mm -hmm. also we don't know the space as well. Um, so this is a trial, um, run here. Um, but that's still a decent number of, of vendors. Um, and, you know, we don't, it's not like a lot of events, like we're not, we don't really curate things necessarily. Like we very rarely turn people away um, because we attract the type of vendor that really works well together. But it's always this, like Jennifer was saying before, a mix of um, of records and music and vintage and also handmade stuff. Hmm. Um, but I just, I mean, I, I just added a vendor to our, um, that, that came in kind of late called, cult party and mm -hmm. um I, I think that their motto was like inclusionist like feminist witch shop you know <laughs> something like that from new york um okay. so you know someone coming in from new york um we've had usually have vendors come from like the worcester area the boston area uh western mass um our dj uh studebaker hawk is from western mass and he's he's done our event for i don't know between 10 and 15 years and he's mm -hmm. a dj um and a record seller so he'll be here 
uh, playing great music, but also selling. Um, he specializes in dance music. Um, so, you know, if you get people um, that just have a different angle on stuff, um, mm. like I noticed, you know, besides your t-shirts, but you put out the hammer party record, which yeah. uh, I think is mm. great. And I really, we really like those, those guys. So oh, thank you. Um, well, well, you have a record coming to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make sure we can make sure uh, to get you one on the weekend. Yeah. Reciprocate. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I don't have the vendor list in front of me, um, but it's, it's just always a good mix. Um, yeah. And really, like I said, it's uncurated, but there's really never been a reason to, um, you know, sometimes people have a, the idea of a flea, a flea market or something mm -hmm. like, and, you know, you'll get vendors selling like knockoff junk and stuff that you see at flea markets, but really we're off their radar. We just, you know, we have a pretty big vendor list, but it's all people kind of like us that, um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, get what we do and want to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Most people have at least, you know, experienced what the event is like. And so they know that it would be a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to explain it to my wife because she, she's a little hesitant herself, a little leery of trying to, trying to sell anything of her own because she makes things herself and, but she's never really, uh, attempted it before okay. and i was just like this is going to be a great little mixed bag i mean yeah. like the people that are going to be coming are people that kind of intend to go out and find something unique Absolutely. it's not like they're looking for you know they're going to have a checklist of a shopping list of like oh i was really hoping to find this thing i mean minus maybe an occasional record mm -hmm. people are going out there just to to see what people have and just kind of explore and experiment yeah. things well, and i think yeah, that that's great when especially with the vintage element whether it's vintage mm. records or vintage clothing it's never going to be the same thing right so yeah. people that collect that kind of stuff are hoping that you know they'll either find you know the right garment that happens to be in their size or that record that they've been searching mm -hmm. for uh for their collection right. so that's you know when you have that kind of collecting instinct <laughs> you know these are the kind of sales that you look forward to because right. yeah it's not like you're going to see the same craft people that have the same people, the same, same inventory every, um, every single time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a total mix. And, um, and there is some randomness. I mean, in like the record collecting world, like there are, you know, there is traditionally people that, that have lists of what they're looking for and they, you know, they go out to, to like record stores and record shows. Um, trying to fill in the gaps um but i think our crowd always is is, is a little different it's just just whatever they kind of happen upon right um, um, yeah i think it's going to be great yeah we're excited um, yeah me too uh i'd like to thank you guys for taking the time and speaking with me about this event um really looking forward to it thank you for also allowing me to participate I'm super oh, excited. Pleasure. No, yes. and we're, mm. we're looking forward to seeing what you and your wife bring. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I well, I, I still got to do a little convincing, but I, I hope that we're going to have a few things at least for at least from her. I, I know what I'm bringing. I have a lot of records. <laughs> I have tons yeah. of 45s too. I don't know if you like those, but mm -hmm. well, now that we DJ, like that's another little side business of ours. It's oh. we DJ, and I was never a fan of 45s. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't see the point of them until we started to DJ and now I'm like, Oh, now I get it. <laughs> it's so much easier to just play a single than right. try to search for the groove in a, you know, mm -hmm. a regular yeah. LP. That's so, true. So um, I have, I have come around to mm -hmm. seeing the value of them, but yeah, there are people that are really serious collectors of 45s mm -hmm. and yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully our mailing list reaches out to them and they, they come by on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Is there anything that I'm forgetting? Is there anything we didn't touch on? Oh. Uh, well, just, you know, it's a free event and, you know, okay. it's, it's very open and inclusive and um, it'll be us um, and our partner for the event with, who is hosting us, the Trinity Beer Garden. Um, mm -hmm. It's from one to six. Um, they'll have, uh, Trinity will have uh, like cocktails and drinks and whatnot. They've also... Um, reached out to some of the downtown restaurants um, to see if they'd want to come and, and do kind of pop-ups. So mm. um, 
Um, I don't have a list in front of me, but I know one of them is called Nicoletta's, I believe, who do, does Italian and Italian oh, ice. Nicobella's. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. I think uh, there are about four, um, four different, maybe five different restaurants doing pop-ups to feed people. Um, Great. And, you know, we'll have all our vendors. Um, it's, it's a cool spot to... Like the beer garden has tables to chill out. There are park benches, grass, you know, to, to chill out. There's space for people to come, um, you know, look look through stuff, maybe make some purchases, and then go hang out and, and you know, sh- show off what they bought or, mm-hmm. or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. The, the beer garden will also have some games and some, some activities. Um, so, um, yeah, just, you know, hopefully – there'll be something for everyone to do, you know, and that's always kind of key. Like we, in our formula of the records, vintage and handmade, you know, say you're a couple um, or a couple friends that go down and you don't like records, but they do, but you like vintage, you know, there's, so people can go off and find something for, you know, in their own, in their own interest. Something for their own interest. Right. Perfect. That sounds Um, great. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I think that's it, but you know, we're excited that it's back and, and we're looking forward to good weather. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Hope so. Me too. I, I agree with both of those statements. All right. Well, uh, again, it's been a pleasure speaking with you both. You I'm so happy too. to see you both and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you again on this weekend. All right. Yes, okay. I'll see you person. Saturday morning. <laughs> All right.